Hello, hello, hello everybody and welcome to another Ravnica Allegiance standard video here on the channel. Today we are going to be playing with Grix's Dragons, but before we jump into the deck tech, I do want to remind you that if you enjoy this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, it really does help me out a ton. If you want to join the community, be sure to hit that subscribe button, it uh, is a great way to show your support for the channel. And finally, if you do have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those in the comments section down below and I will happily respond with my thoughts or answers. I really do enjoy interacting with all of you folks. But let's get into the deck now. Uh, now, I found this deck look, while watching Huey Jensen's Twitch stream. I was looking for another deck that had Nicole Bolas the Ravager in it. Uh, after my last Grixis deck, I thought I could maybe play a deck where Nicole Bolas was a little bit more at home, and where better to be at home than th surrounded by your fellow dragons. So I just turned on his stream, and he was playing this deck, and I was like, this is Destiny, the deck I meant to play. So I copied his deck over, and uh, I've been playing a little bit with it, having a good time, and uh, I decided to share it with all of you. I'm going to go through the card choices one by one. Uh, why do I call it Grixis Dragons? Well, first of all, because there are a couple of cards that pay you off for having dragons, and then there are some dragons. So Sarkon the Fireblood uh, at, lets you add two mana. In, it's plus one. Uh, is You can either discard a card to, and draw a card, which helps you by uh, getting rid of your dead cards in... Uh, game one which is really nice and then his other ability adds two mana in any combination of colors and spend that mana to cast dragon spells so getting out an early scargan hellkite or an early niv mizzet uh or even uh like niv N N nicole bolas plus something is really nice so sarkon is definitely a payoff for the dragons and then dragon sword uh, fixes your colors and uh you can whenever you have a dragon enter the battlefield it puts a gold counter i uh, know uh yeah, gold counter, and then you can remove a gold counter to draw a card. So Dragon's Horde is another payoff for dragons. And then the payoff dragons that we have are for Nicole Bolas the Ravager. Really the reason we are Grixis. This card is super powerful, and I'm... Yeah, the name's one of the best cards in the deck. I'm always happy to play this card. It's just super fun, too. Uh, Scargan Hellkite. I think this card's pretty underutilized in Standard right now. It is a very powerful card, um, and currently it only really sees play in the red green mid range decks. I think this deck is a really nice home for it because of the dragon payoffs. You can get it out a little bit earlier, you can ramp it, and also it's just like a very nice mana sink, uh, slash some extra burst damage potentially. Niv Mizzet Paran can single handedly win you the game against mono blue or mono white sometimes if they don't kill it immediately uh, by just picking off their small creatures. There's not like a ton of instance to support it, but there's a, like some card draw. Sarkon can like draw you extra cards and stuff like that uh, to support the Niv Mizzet. And then it's just a big flying creature that can't be counted so it's good against control going to get you some card advantage varix bladewing is probably the worst dragon in the deck which is kind of funny because varix bladewing is still a very powerful card four mana four four flyer might is not like super impressive on its own consider especially considering that nicole bolas is a four mana four four that makes them discard and can become a planeswalker but varix bladewing has the extra kicker ability of making two four fours when you kick it so if you get to that late game top deck Varix, it does have a lot of potential. Then we have a lot of removal in this deck. We've got three cast downs, three lava coils, and two bedevils. Uh, some more card advantage in three treasure maps, and then a little bit of hand disruption in thought erasures. Also can let you sculpt your game plan. Uh, going over to the sideboard, we have three duress, three negates for the control matchups, though I don't really hesitate as much to bring in duress for any matchup where I have a lot of dead cards, because I think duress has just a little bit of utility against the aggressive decks as well. The mono white decks, uh, Unbreakable Formation, Conclave Tribunals, uh, History of Benalia, so you can hit those. Mono red has Experimental Frenzy and just a bunch of burn spells, so you almost always can hit something relevant, even in the aggressive matchup. So I do like duress. Uh, I bring it in maybe a little bit more than most people do. Uh, Moment of Craving and Cry of the Carnarium, also for aggressive matchups. And then Legion Warboss um, is for the matchups where your opponent isn't going to interact with you, or you just want to get something onto the board early to start snowballing the game. Anyway, that is going to do it for the deck tech. If you want to watch Huey's stream where he was playing with this deck and plays a lot of other decks, you can find, uh, I'll put a link to Huey's stream in the description and uh, in the comment section in a pinned comment. But without further ado, we're going to jump into the matches. I hope you enjoyed the deck tech and stay with me. Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to round one. We've got a bit of a sketchy hand here. Not sure if I can keep it. We're on the draw. Uh, we do have a lot of lands in this deck. We got some game against a lot of the potential decks. We can't cast Sarkon very easily. Um, Thought Erasure, it might be a bit slow. I kind of want to be able to cast stuff on turn two. Um, 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 Ritual of Soap may be hit or miss. Huh. I'm going to mulligan this hand. The mana is just too clunky there. Uh, we kind of... Wow, three tablet. We're going to keep this hand. We can scry a good land at the top. We can actually bottom that. We just want to draw a land that can let us cast our spells. Uh, untapped. And looks like we're playing against a mono red deck. Unfortunate. Ritual of Soot could be good, but 
we don't have really any life gain in the main deck and uh, our mana is incredibly clunky right now oh my gosh another enters the battlefield tap land well 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 okay okay this is probably the best possible start for us because we do want to be able to ritual of soot their things that being said we're in deep trouble here because we don't have the lands to cast ritual of soot on turn four and we were on the draw so yeah he is a very creature reliant draw which is kind of okay for us if we were on the play here we would actually be in great shape because we would next turn be ritual of setting probably wow could i just draw literally any of my lands that don't come into play tapped <laughs> oh the agony so i'm gonna take four five six seven seven this turn probably maybe even more probably even more oh okay so we're taking seven damage here and then he can cast a follow-up spell. And we lose the game if we don't draw an untapped land. Judging by our luck, we'll draw another Drowned Catacombs. Yes! Oh, man. Not the exact type of land we wanted to see. Shock land is never, like, ideal, but we just killed five of his cards. So that was good. And then um, now this card will come into play. Now our land's come into play untapped. Okay, yeah, we probably lose here. Skewer. Light up the stage. Oh, whiff, whiff. Goblin Chain Whirler. We're going to go to one, boys. Oh, man. We're still alive. Okay, we're going to get this Skarg and Hellkite into play. With haste. Just want to kill the opponent as quickly as possible. Upkeep, we will definitely use the treasure map. Um, if that spell was relevant, he would have cast it already. Yes. No, don't kill me. No whammies. No! Oh, we almost stabilized. That was a pretty horrific draw. If if our shock land had been a non-shock land, we would have been at one there. Okay, so in this matchup, I, I'm going to cut the Varixes. They don't really... Actually, I'm going to keep the Varixes. I'm going to cut... Um, What do I want to cut? I'm going to cut the slower cards. Tharkon's much worse against mono red because you can't really protect it early on, so it's just going to die. You want to keep all your removal spells. I generally... I'm going to cut treasure map. Treasure map's just pretty slow. Um, and I want to add Moment of Craving for sure, Cry of the Carnarium, uh, probably. Actually, Cry of the Carnarium is not as good. It doesn't kill Chain Whirler, and it doesn't kill, um, Runaway Steamkin once it's run away. It does kill a decent amount of things, though. We'll, we'll bring it in. And then this is one of those spots where you can bring in a Duress. I'll bring in a Duress. It can just take a spell that I can't really deal with otherwise. Um, do I want any, I, I kind of want to shave some of my top end guys. I think I'm going to cut Scargan and one Dragon Sword. No, Dragon Sword is going to be fine. I'm going to, hmm. what do I want? I'm going to cut one Scargan for a second duress maybe. Yeah, that seems fine to me. So maybe I already have the Thought Erasures. Maybe Thought Erasure. I, now that I've added a lot more removal spells, I'm just going to cut. I just want would rather. I'm going to. Hmm. I kind of just want to use turn one to play a, a tap land. So I'll just run one of those. I'll just run. Yeah, sideboarding's tricky. Let's just keep this Gargan Hellkite. It's a nice big guy. Maybe on the draw we'll cut it for a duress. On the draw, you want cheaper spells, generally. On the play, you can be, yeah, more reliant on your other things. 
This is another hand that will never find an untapped land, but we'll keep it. We've got a Moment of Craving, a Lava Coil, a Ritual of Soot, and a Thought Erasure. Oh my goodness. We're going to start off with Sulfur Falls. I think we have more black untapped lands than um, blue ones. Yeah, our mana has not been cooperating. Usually you don't have draws like this as, as commonly. Let's Thought Erasure. We just want to find a land for next turn. Okay, we don't care about the Lava Coil, we'll just try to strand that. Let's take the Lightning Strike, and we'll ditch the Cry. He doesn't have green mana to cast the Colossus part of this, so he really has no pressure. So we'll take two here, we'll Moment of Craving his guy, and then just build up to casting a bunch of dragons. take the Collision Colossus, ditch that because we just want to draw lands, and we already have our Lava Coil. Gonna just cast Thought Erasure because we don't have extra black mana anyway. Kind of funny that our opponent can't draw a land to save his life. I mean, can't draw a spell, and I can't draw a land. Uh, there's a land. Not the best land, but we'll keep it. We'll definitely duress him. Get that. Ooh. Artifact or enchantment. Yeah, we don't care about that one. Our opponent definitely sideboarded in some removal spells, and that's been really hurting him. Nice. Let's just get our Skargon Hellkite down with a counter so he doesn't die to any future top deck lava coils. Let's get Varix down. Animation Tribal here. Look at that animation, it's so sick. And our opponent can kill the barracks now. Two more turns and he's dead. Hopefully he doesn't find a collision colossus before that happens, but you never know. So we have him dead next turn. So our opponent probably is going to go back towards a more aggressive strategy for game three. Hopefully our lands cooperate. He definitely sideboarded a lot of cards here. Which really helped us out. He didn't have any pressure early on. Um, so that's something I'd recommend against doing. He just kind of brought in the whole cartload of cards. Um, hmm. So Niv-Mizzet can be a little bit tricky to get going, but if you do get it going, you kind of just win. Hmm. Do I want Sarkon or Tra Dragon's Horde? If he has Cinder Vines... Wait, well, where did these come from? Did I just play with a sick... I, you can't over-sideboard, can you? That's not a thing. Yeah, um... 
we're going to bring in our last couple duresses. We're going to bring in some negates, I think. And then we'll just cut some cards that are a bit slower. Yeah, we'll cut a couple thought erasures. <sighs> I'm not 100% sure how to sideboard perfectly with this deck. I'm like not a master of it. That's one of the things about designing your own decks is you kind of know how you're supposed to sideboard, but this is just a general sideboarding idea I've got. I kind of like the the extra good stuff. This seems like a solid hand. We'll keep it. We've actually got <laughs> we actually have a way to cast our spells this time. Uh, so that's a nice thing. I just generally don't think you want to be taking turns off against Mono Red, so the the Dragon Sword on the draw when you're behind is just much worse than a Duress or something, I think. That can, like, take three damage from them. Oh, that was the perfect draw. Cinder Vines, eh? That is a card I'm happy to see on turn two, I must say. Like, sure, it'll do three, four damage to me here. But I don't actually have any artifacts in my deck. And I have the Dengate in case he has a um, Experimental Frenzy. Sure. I guess I could have a moment of craving to that, but I don't want to get like double shocked and then have to waste another removal spell. Also, this is just more mana efficient. Do I want to cast Nicole Bolas here? If I cast Nicole Bolas, he could experimental frenzy me. And I think I'm in good shape if he doesn't have Experimental Frenzy. Would he have just gone for Experimental Frenzy there? He probably would have. He also probably just has a kill spell for a dragon. Let's just cast it. He'll kill this one, and then we'll play the next one and empty out his hand. And uh, we'll win that, that way. Because he probably has a Collision Colossus or something like that, or a Lava, co or a lava Coil. And his deck doesn't seem really configured for uh, Experimental Frenzy right now. Wow, he doesn't go for anything. That means he probably has Lava Coil. Fight with Fire, yeah, same thing. Okay. Let's go for another one. Even if he does have Frenzy, we do have a decent amount of value of our own. Okay. So we're fairly confident he has a spell. Because he's been discarding non-spells. Wow! We'll get rid of the Lava Coil. We already have one. Yeah, I think our opponent tremendously missed sideboarded. Like, he has had no pressure at all. He's got only answers. He's trying to, like, play, like, a control game. We'll definitely just moment of craving this. And I think... There's really no reason to let him resolve an Experimental Frenzy, so we'll just pass until we have the extra mana up, because that's the only way we lose this game. We have a removal spell if he has like a Chain Whirl or a Runaway Steamkin, and we can just wait until we draw that extra land. Because like, he can get enough value to just overpower us, 
whereas otherwise we just can't lose. So we're going to wait. Yeah, we don't care about that. Sure, we'll pay two life. Get a counter. It's a four turn clock now. Actually, a three turn clock because we can start activating it. So we hit him for five, activate it. It's like hitting him for seven a turn. Let's duress him. We do take two from a duress, but our life total doesn't matter right now. We're at such a high life total. Yeah, I figured it was a lava coil, because lava coil can't kill this, and he probably would have played a land in case he drew experimental frenzy. And that is how you win against Mono Red with Grixis Dragons. I anticipate the concession coming. Though he didn't concede last game, so. No reason to tap out. Boom! We got the W. Anyway, that is going to do it for round one. I hope you enjoyed it and stay with me for the next one. Hello, hello, and welcome back to round two. Uh, unfortunately, this hand is too slow to keep. This hand is much better. And we will get rid of the Nicol Bolas because we just want to find lands to cast the turn three Sarkon. One of the things, even though Nicol Bolas is one of our best cards and a good draw would go like Thought Erasure Sarkon, Nicol Bolas maybe. Um, we have to remember that we could still draw another Nicole Bolas like that, or uh, we just have a lot of powerful cards and we want to draw our lands and cheap spells. In limited, you would never get rid of your Nicole Bolas there, I don't think. But our, obviously, we wouldn't have like such a good card out in limited. Um, hmm, this is interesting. Uh, I think we want to get rid of the creatures, so we will get rid of. Chain Whirler, and we will bin the Hellkite. We do just want to <sighs> hit land drop still. Wow, he's adapting. That's aggressive. Play that tapped, play another thought erasure now. The question of what to take becomes a lot trickier. Um I can I'm inclined to take the collision colossus. Because that's the only card that can really take down our dragons. Um also the trample's really annoying. Yeah, let's do that. And we're just looking for uh ritual of soot here, pretty much. Okay, that's a good draw. So we'll just play Nicole Bolas, make him discard a card. Okay, he gets rid of the Chain Whirler, interesting. Lightning Striking Face. He does have a lot of value with these Chamber Guardians. But if he is going to adapt, it gives me a nice window here. 
Let's block this one so that he has to adapt. He like could adapt, or he could choose not to, but obviously we want to make him do a forcing play. Um, and then we can bedevil this one. We will bedevil it. Grow the Chamber Guardian is doing work here. Okay. <clears throat> we will bedevil that. So we kind of baited him a little bit there. That worked out. Play that tapped. Hmm. Yeah, we want to keep open the option of drawing in a cold ball loss or something. We'll play our sweet animation, Varric Blade Wing. Our opponent probably has a way to kill us here, but we'll get better after sideboard. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this looks like a kind of tricky-ish matchup. Probably a little bit worse than Mono Red. Definitely don't want to rest in this matchup. Moment of Craving is interesting. It kills Crawl Harpooner, which he probably has. Um, Cry of the Carnarium, not as good as uh, other cards in this matchup. Legion War Boss is very interesting, though. I don't think I can afford the Sarkons. Do I want Legion War Boss in the matchup? The tokens will kind of just get run over. It's not a big enough body. I don't think I can afford it. I don't think I want Duress either. Thought Erasure is probably going to be all I get to use here. Because he just doesn't have a ton of non-creatures. I mean, he has Collision Colossus. He'll probably have Lava Coils. On the play, do I want Sarkon? With more removal. Would I rather have Sarkon or Treasure Map? Probably Treasure Map. I He just has a lot of creatures. You'd rather have Sarkon in matchups where they don't have as many. Um, ways to pressure it like yeah maybe you're just never supposed to take out Sarkon but I'm a fan of just taking out cards that are bad in matchups like that we'll keep this hand this is a great hand we will start off with watery grave tap so now we if we draw um, bot erasure we can just cast it without hurting ourselves the treasure map is here uh, we're not going to scry. We're just going to play the Dragon's Horde and scry, probably. Okay, now we will... Um, now we will scry, but we'll hold up casts down. We, will rat we don't want him to start the chain of value. Yep, We one of the reasons that I did that... You can't just like make plays in the dark, because normally... Him adapting is probably not the best use of his mana, but he did that exact play last game where he just adapted it as early as possible. So uh, we just don't want to walk into those. Well, uh, my upkeep stop didn't do anything there, but uh, it was okay. Hmm. Let's just see what he's working with. Um... Let's take. So Legion Warboss is going to leave a token behind. Either way, we're going to be. Let's just take the Legion Warboss here. Because now, if he plays this thing as a 4 4, we can just kill it with our Lava Coil and have a clean answer. Or we'll kill that. Yeah. Definitely keeping that one on top. We're just going to Lava Coil the, the uh, Phoenix here, though. Keep our life total high. Okay. He's giving it haste. Don't want that. And 
and Skarg and Hellkite. Nice. So we'll be able to flip the Nicole Bolas next turn. Rats. Let's draw in response. Maybe we'll get a... Nope. Dang. Unable to get the uh, cast down or something. But still, good value from the Nicole Bolas. I think we're going to try and just get... We're just going to try and get some value here. We'll see what he's working with. Probably not a land. Ooh, that was a good one to take. Keep our own Skargon Hellkite on top. And we will play this tapped and then just play this. We don't need to draw the card right now. Play it with a counter because that's just bigger. Now if he has Collision Colossus, he can't attack us. I mean, I guess he'll just kill this. Boom! We got the win in game two. Whew. Okay, I like our sideboard plan, especially on the draw. Sarkon gets much worse. Now we know he has Crawl Harpooner. Yeah, I still like our sideboard plan. Keep in mind, we do want to try and save our Lava Coils for Phoenixes. And uh, maybe we'll be able to scare him off of going for Growth Chamber Adapts. That card is definitely a, a, a good one in the matchup. Or in game one, it was good. Maybe not after we bring in three Moment of Cravings. Hopefully, we can get a Ritual of Soot. That would be nice. That would be a good draw here in this matchup as well. I like how we're represented by Sarkon. That's a fitting representation. I do... Dis I'm disappointed in the visual bug of Vivian Reed kind of showing up here. I mean, they probably know about it and aren't working to fix it. It's just a little bit annoying. We'll keep this... Very painful mana base, though. I mean, I guess turn one, we don't care. Perfect. Maybe we'll get him if he goes for that growth chamber guardian shenanigans. Oh, nice. I think we're just going to save to life here. No, we'll pay two life to get a treasure map into play. It's we we don't want to just we don't want to hold up cast down because he could just play a girl spellbreaker and really punish us. Simic growth chamber guardian aim. Eh? Okay. Well, he doesn't have a third land. So here I actually am going to go for the um, dragon horde scry play because if he if he's only play, like he already has six spells in hand. If he's just adapting this, I'm in good shape. Nice. Let's scry. Dang, I didn't put the stop in time, I guess. Annoying. Annoying, annoying, annoying. Hmm. Yep, we'll play the Nicole Bolas. If he hits a land, he'll have to use all his mana on uh, attacking through my guy. We'll scry. We want to flip this as soon as possible. Don't really want another treasure thing. And then we will scry again, because we don't really want lands here. Draw. Ooh, nice. Hmm. We could just flip this right now. Flip minus three, but then it dies to stuff. We could flip plus. 
Hmm. Okay, I've got, I'm just going to play Varex instead. Because Varix gives me a lot of blockers and a lot of pressure. Kerox and Varix. Oh yes, Kerox. Boom! We got the win. Our opponent was mana screwed, but we battled back after losing game one once again. And uh, now we're on to the third and final round of this video. I hope you stay with me for the finals. Hello and welcome to the final round here. Um, this is definitely a keeper. Uh, we've got a Thought Erasure, Dragon Sword some, for some value. I mean, the Dragon Horde for value, Thought Erasure for early interaction, Cast Down, and Ritual Slit if it's an aggressive matchup. Green deck, probably a good sign for me. Not going to lie, probably good. Unless it's a uh, Nexus deck, in which case Thought Erasure could come in clutch. Black, green, A. Eh? Okay, okay. We're going to just land Thought Erasure. Okay. So, hmm. He only has three lands, but he can definitely just find more. I kind of just want to get rid of the Merfolk Branch Walker, but it'll die a Ritual of Soot. I'm just going to get rid of Fine Finality. We'll graveyard that. We just want to hit lands here. It's funny because cast down can't kill Nicole Bolas. I've actually had that be relevant before. My opponent was playing control and they had two cast downs in their hand. Okay, so we'll take five here, then we'll Ritual of Soot. And then we'll find a way to deal with this Chupacabra. Probably just going to run the Nicole Bolas into it. Get some value from the Dragon Sword when I play the Nicole Bolas. Get kind of a three for one because I draw a card, they discard a card, and they have to use their Chupacabra. Then again, I might just wait. Because if they just keep playing cards out, it could be a success for me. Let's kill that. I'm a little bit worried about Carnage Tyrant. And I kind of, yeah, nabbing their last card would be very good. I'm just going to kill that. kill it again I think this might be just Carnage Tyrant like what else could it be okay there's Scargan haste it up because it's going to die to the Chupacabra anyway. Our Nicole Bolas being able to flip is pretty nice because it can get back to Skargan. And now if he plays land, we can nab the Carnage Tyrant. Perfect. We were patient, and we will be rewarded. Dang it. Of course we draw Thought Erasure right then. But now if he uses Memorial Folly to get it back... Oh, it was just a land, but I was so clever. Opponent was also clever. I will flip this next turn.
Okay. They're going to attack. And then flip it, get back Skarg and Hellkite. Flipping Nicole Bolas the Ravager is so satisfying. And then we will get back. Ooh, we could get back Niv Mizzet. Oh, I like that. Let's do that. Oh my gosh. Wow. And we can draw two cards to kill something. Oh my goodness. That would have been sick. I forgot we had, discard we had uh, gotten that into the graveyard. Clearly we're just a reanimator deck at this point. Um, so against Soltai. I don't really want the Legion War Boss. It'll just get blocked early on. Negates could be good for taking care of Nissa. I think Sarkhan's actually good in this matchup because we can. He doesn't have all the early pressure. Not Nissa. I'm thinking of Vivian Reed. Sorry, might be. We want all of our value plays. Ritual of Soot is still probably good in some number. I'll shave one Ritual of Soot for one Negate. Actually, I'm going to cut the Varexes for the other two negates, because other than Bedevil, I don't really have a good answer for things that have resolved, and the Varex isn't as good in this matchup, because he can just Chupacabra it or something, and you want to end up up on cards. It's really good as a 4-4 four, four against certain matchups, but not in this one. On the draw, we're going to keep this hand. A couple of removal spells. It's really resilient. Got a little bit of ramp. Just needs to find one land, really. Only really needs one to get there. Oh, man. Yeah, we'll lava coil that. Don't want to get let our opponent get too far ahead. Especially if we might be stuck for a little bit. Never stuck. Never punished. Thank goodness it resolved. It resolves! We're alive! We're safe! Do we want to go for the Nicole Bolas here? Or do we want to play it safe around Vivian? He's going to have Vivian in his hand a decent amount of the time. He hasn't been doing anything, so that makes me think he might have been had like a Llanowar Elves, Vivian Reed draw. We're going to end the turn. If he has Vivian, he'll probably go for it. And rewarded. Hopefully there's not a second Vivian. That'd get awkward. Perfect. Oh, yes. That's one of those things where, like, you have to play a decent amount to kind of know, get the sense for when they have that Vivian. But when you know, you know. Let's get this guy down as a 5-5. Five, five. What? Oh, that's sad. No attacks. We'll trade, because we have a second one. Ritual of Sit does kill the races, which is cool. Only drawing one card. In interesting. Let's see what we hit here off the gold counter. Perfect. All of the value. Wow, getting rid of a duress. That means he has a spell in hand. Maybe going to try and nab it with our third. Okay. Ritual of Soot actually looking kind of nice to kill the crisis. But I think we might just get the niv Mizzet into play. Yeah, definitely just going to go for the Niv.
We do have to tap our dragon's horde for that mana, but that's why we have it. It gets us the mana. I'm liking our spot here. Next turn we're going to kill his whole, whole board. Aww. No. Okay. And he concedes! Whoo! We were going to draw a card, lava coil, his thing, use the extra draw to keep, finish pinging off that 3-2. Yeah, that was good. Sweet. Anyway, I sincerely hoped hope that you enjoyed the video. Uh, for anyone who didn't get a chance to look at the deck, here it is. It was taken from Huey Jensen's uh, stream, so be sure to check out Huey Jensen's stream. Give him a little bit of support. I do uh, really appreciate all the people that are streaming, and you can just kind of look at their decks and get inspiration. And This is a really sweet one, and uh, I'm glad that I was uh, able to find this. So thank you so much, everybody, for making it all the way to the end. If you did make it all the way to the end, say hashtag Bolas wins. Uh, and put that in the comment section down below to let me know you made it all the way to the end. I always love putting those little Easter egg things for people to find at the end of the video. But yeah, that is going to do it. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe, comment, and uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys in the next one. See you later.